world. I am the founder of Body Shop. We are a fitness studio located in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are founded on sweat, smiles, and fun. So the whole idea of Body Shop is any of our amazing programs are attainable for any level of fitness, and they're all surrounded by the idea that fitness should be fun. Um, in addition to our awesome classes, we also have an infrared sauna in-house, and we are getting ready to take over a in-house smoothie bar. So we've got some exciting things happening over here at Body Shop. Oh my God, Kels, hello. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen you since you were little. Oh my God, and I love the fact that your mom's like, oh my God, you gotta talk to Kelsey. She's doing great things. So I wanna know how it started. I mean, from this little girl that I knew years ago, and now all of a sudden you own a business, how did you start this business and this endeavor? Well, I think it's like a long and twisted path. You know, um, I graduated from Tulane University in 2013, and loved New Orleans and wanted to stay. The job market here is not stellar. Um, I graduated with a degree in marketing in Spanish, but I really think that your degree, college degree, is kind of just learning how to learn. And um, so I tried a little marketing stint for a little while and I did not love it. I quickly learned that being at a desk was not for me. Um, and I was not happy or fulfilled doing that. I was doing some side hustle work at a fitness studio because I do love that. I was a gymnast growing up, very connected to movement and loved that. And when this kind of opportunity arose that they didn't have a manager there and I was getting offered a full-time position at a job I really didn't like. So I kind of carved out a role for myself at this fitness studio, which was pretty large. Um, and then just developed from there, started teaching, really fell in love with that. I think that I am innately a teacher and that brings me a lot of joy. So the business side of things and then also the interaction, um, I just feel very lucky because I really do feel like I've found my calling, my passion. Um, and then fast forward, you know, things happen in life and it was kind of the push that I needed to seriously think about opening my own fitness studio. Um, New Orleans doesn't have a lot of it. We are kind of like a prime place to be able to go in and do it yourself. New Orleans is a great place for entrepreneurs. So last March, it's been like a year kind of from my, my conception and forming my LLC and all of that good stuff, we are here. Um, and yeah, so started building it out, found a location that I loved close to Tulane, close to Loyola, walking distance for students, and um, started the build out. Uh, put a lot of time, effort, money into building out a space that hadn't been um, inhabited since before Katrina. So it was a corner spot. Nothing has been in here since pre-Katrina. So an awesome opportunity to kind of revive the space. Um, and we opened in November. All right, so you know what is so interesting for New Orleans because um, it was a, th a three for a hit. It was Katrina, it was the economy um, 10 years ago, and now it's now. How is it running a business knowing that it has been three major hits in such a short window of time? Um, you know, I, I think that that is like a long period of time, right? For It seems for me in my 28 years of life, you know, between Katrina and now, and then thinking about all of the hits that, you know, I've kind of gone through just in the past year of opening this business. Um, mm -hmm. I think that with every challenge, you get stronger. Um, and it's funny, it's something that I've been reflecting on because I tell that to my classes when I'm coaching them through these tough exercises, you know, it's getting you stronger, these challenges, but it's such a life thing. And, um, so it's definitely uncertain, but it's, and can be unsettling, but I think it forces you to get creative. We were not even closed for 24 hours. We didn't miss one day of classes. When we transitioned from in-person classes, we were rocking and rolling, selling out almost every class, 25 people in a room. Um, business was booming. And then COVID happened, we shut down, but we, didn't miss a beat. We went right to online um, digital streaming. We, and then we've just continued to pivot from there. So we've been able to keep the community engaged. I think it's shown us new places, new revenue streams for us. Um, it's, 
if you look for open doors, you'll find them. And that's what we're doing now. You said it best because I was going to go there pivoting. Small businesses are known to pivot through any circumstances. Um, and so when I see companies that are not pivoting and, that, and they're small, and I'm like, I, I'm scratching my head because we're known to be agile. So what are a few things that you did um, for, for a couple things? What did you do for the business to keep it afloat? Um, how many staff members do you have and what did you do to take care of them? And what are you doing for yourself? So three major questions right there. All right. So for the business, um, like I said, we just quickly, I sh taught my last class on a Monday morning. It was crazy. It was four months to the day since we'd opened our doors. Um, and we had to close them down. Taught my last class on Monday morning. By Tuesday afternoon, we had 33 people bigger than what we can house in studio signed up for a virtual class. Um, so we didn't miss a beat. We saw how important it was. Even prior to closing down, people were anxious. There was a lot of uncertainties. Tulane sent its um, students home. Some of them were still off campus and staying, but we knew how important it was for us to be here and be a positive light and outlet for people during a really uncertain and scary time. Um, quickly, quickly pivoted, figured out. We did it through Zoom the first go round and it was not perfect. And it worked and it was fine. I mean, people appreciate it even though the quality was meh and we we're figuring out sound and lighting and um, the fact that we didn't miss, miss a beat and we're able to keep people engaged and the community engaged by different um, like chat features that we've integrated since then has been um, really great. We've been able to more than stay afloat um, and more than I think we had set ourselves, we were in a really, we were in a good position for a brand new business. We we're in a good position financially when this happened because we had been rocking and rolling. Um, and our focus less on cutting costs and how do we survive this and more on how do we continue to grow this community, like strong community that we've created in four short months. Um, how do we keep that engagement? So that was really where the focus was. How do we differentiate ourselves in a climate where fitness content is, I mean, if you're on social media right now, you see it. Like, it is amazing because I think the mental and the physical is so important and we are in a weird place globally. And I think it's gonna have a lot of mental health repercussions. And if we can keep people moving, I think we're doing our job. Um, but there's a lot out there and there's a lot of big brands out there that can offer it for free or for a super low cost. I mean, people are going live on Instagram. I mean, all the time, always. And so we knew that our kind of competitive edge was our community and being able to foster that and being able to cut through the one dimensional, I'm a teacher teaching to whoever's on this other side of this screen we don't know we don't care to like really personalizing that we set up a production studio we had teleprompters we had someone on the chat talking with the people who were registered for the class um and these different chat features that we've researched and so there's that two-way communication we have people college students reuniting that were all sent home to different areas in the country reuniting on the chat We've got people wishing each other happy birthday. So we've created this little subsidiary stream team of our bigger body shop community. And it's been weird, wild, and fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, okay, so let's just like go through, um, through something that you said that just like really caught my attention. So it's all about location, location, location. You built the studio by the university. Now the universities are empty. People are coming back to you. So are you finding other people outside of the students coming to you and finding you because you're four months old. Um, it takes so much traction, so much marketing to get someone's attention um, when you're a brick and mortar. Um, the students automatic traffic, but now your automatic traffic is no longer there. So the students are finding you online. They heard about you before. Are you finding new audiences that would have never thought about you and realizing, oh, like how did I not notice these guys were around? So what's the age, what's the demographics of clientele that you're seeing online that would have probably never come into the studio because of the size or just didn't drive by? So um, we are new. We don't have a lot of marketing dollars in terms and substantial marketing budget that would cut through the noise and be able to really get us out there. So word of mouth, which is such an effective marketing tool. Um, 
conversion wise has been our best friend. I mean, people coast to coast are streaming with us because they heard about it from a friend posted on social media. We've been asking post your sweaty selfies, you know, smiles are contagious too. And people, once they get that experience of the first time they see how we're different and they see the fun that we're having and they're having it alongside with us. And um, so I think just staying true to kind of our brand and what we are has been a really good marketing tool because people feel that, tell their friends about it. We have parents who have now religiously been doing it with their students who are, it actually, it, so it was right before they, you know, would have graduated and summer slow in New Orleans. We were kind of bracing for that outside of the student population being gone. It is going to be, I mean, it's already mid nineties here and it's really humid. So people get out if they can, you know, go to their vacation homes or just doing other things during the summer here. So we were ready for a slowdown. We had, played, we had thought about going streaming um, even prior to this. Prior to really, it was initial business plan. Then once we opened, I was like, our competitive advantage is our community and being here and that connection. And then quickly that was taken away. <laughs> um, so we went to the streaming and you know what? It's happened at a great time because these students were going to go back to their homes. It's not a very local crowd with Loyola and Tulane. And um, we've been able to continue streaming with them and keep them as members, which is awesome. And now they're doing it with their moms or their family members. You know, I have, it makes me so happy. My family on the East Coast, my cousin's been streaming every single class. My aunt who hasn't worked out in a long time has gotten back into it. So there's a lot of silver linings. Uh, what are you saying to the people that, um, or what advice could you say to the people that were at the beginning were, they were like, this is like crazy. What's happening? I mean, this is, this cannot be for real. Then they saw all the different apps and all these different exercise classes and they were full on. And now they're just fatigued. They're fatigued with exercising. They're fatigued with the kitchen. They're fatigued with everything. They just hit rock bottom. I want this to end. But yet now the anxiety is so high because things are opening up, but I don't want to go out. I'm not ready to go out. Um, I'm scared to go out. So what are you saying with that? Because Obviously, physical and mental come hand in hand. Um, and I don't know if you're seeing it. I don't know if you're getting comments about that. But what would you say to people that are just, they're fatigued with life um, and they want to be mentally on target. And yet there's just like so many unknowns. One, they're so not alone. <laughs> um, I think everybody has gone through the roller coaster of um, emotions through this process. And I know at the beginning, I was seeing a lot of, what are you using this time towards? And how are you staying motivated? And um, how are you growing during this time? And that's great. And while some people can quickly flip a switch during a global traumatic event <laughs> and channel their energies that way, it's okay if you can. I think you've really got to honor yourself right now. Um, in the highs and the lows, but have something to come back to. I personally have had my own journey with anxiety and depression, especially in my college years. That's why I really love working with that demographic, but I think it's relatable across the board. Um, and movement for me was like the remedy. I mean, yes, I was medicated and I think that you gotta do what your mental health professional thinks is right, but I was able to overcome it ultimately and I'm not medicated anymore. And I, it's, you know, my anxiety levels are way lower because I'm moving every single day and it doesn't have to look like a high intensity interval class. It can be putting on your favorite song and dancing like a fool around your kitchen. It can be, <laughs> Do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, when I started the dance cardio class and I wore a thong leotard for our seventies <laughs> leotards and LeMay theme class yesterday. <laughs> so, um, going for a walk, calling your best friend, your mom, talking about what you're feeling and just getting your body moving, especially in those times. And I, I just got a message from one of our members the other day and she's in school right now. She also works. Um, and she said, you're on demand because we have a full on demand platform with our live classes too, but she said, saving me. Um, you know, my anxiety is spiraling out of control. I wasn't really moving. And this is someone who is a mover. 
she loves to exercise and she um, said it wasn't really moving my body because I kind of felt that paralyzed of like, she's like, it has really been helping me. And I just told her, we all go through that kind of, can go through that cycle of anxiety where it is debilitating until you find something that gives you your footing. And for me, that's movement. And I think for a lot of people it is um, to be able to kind of push you through it. And then it might happen again. But if you know you've got that rock, something that really makes you feel good and is able to get you out of your head and into your body, um, I think it's a beautiful thing. It's so funny that you say that because um, I, I'm a runner. I train for marathons. I mean, I'm, I, I'm training for Ch Chicago Marathon that may be canceled, may not be canceled in October. Um, I'm sitting in front of my computer. I feel the tire coming and I'm like, wait, I'm exercising. Um, but I'm sitting like idle on a chair. And um, then there's those emotional, like, am I BMSing? Wait, am I like, I can't, I, I don't even know what's up or what's down. Um, I'm smiling, I'm talking, I'm doing my every day. I feel happy and yet, and I'm sleeping like a baby, but yet there's that, that little moment of like, something's not right, something's off. And it's just like, it's just hearing that everyone has something off right now and to have a go-to is phenomenal. So it's fantastic that you're the go-to, but who's the go, I mean, are you, I mean, well, how many people on your staff and are, what are you doing for them to make sure that their anxieties and things are, are leveled? And who's your go-to? Like, what are you doing for yourself? Um, so my team, first of all, I just have to shout them out. They're like, so, in I mean, so incredible. When we're at everybody, we're 11 people. So we're small, but we are fierce. And um, right now when everything happened, you know, some people have families at home. They weren't comfortable because we're filming in studio. It's a really small group that's filming. Um, like there's three people in the room right now, but um, it was very much your own, you, oh, this is optional. And only if you feel like it's safe and comfortable for you and that, and no judgment. And so from the seven trainers that I have, four of us remain. And then I've got um, two full-time people uh, for my, everybody's kind of an independent contractor, um, which, you know, they can, so it's not a necessarily salaried except for my full-time employees. Um, but some of them are teachers. And so their kind of world has been flipped upside down and it's been able to keep them busy, which, um, and not just busy, but we have a really good time. Um, you know, we're, they're here outside of just their filming hours. We're doing, you know, other workouts together. We're kind of each other's quarantine crew, which has been great. Um, I've been doing weekly lunches for the stream team from local businesses. Um, We've kind of been each other's quarantine crew. So outside of here, we also um, like have had some picnics together and stuff because we're really not seeing anybody else besides each other. You know, you've got your quarantine team. And um, I love, I, lo I think that uh, w because people didn't get the, the extent of this, um, I think that a lot of people would have enjoyed a quarantine team versus either being by themselves or being with one other individual. So that, that nice, just even hearing quarantine team, that sounds awesome. Yeah, and so that has been, I think for all of us, not I think, I know because we talk about it all the time, like how it, it's giving us purpose because we know we're helping other people. We get messages about it daily, but it is helping us get through this too. Um, so in terms of the team, just keeping them supported, keeping them in the know. Um, we're a big feedback culture at Body Shop, so continuing that. Um, through this period of time, especially as things kind of start to open and we are not open in New Orleans yet. We're not phase one. I'm not in a rush to open, um, but just continuously tapping people for feedback about what makes them comfortable, especially like my core team is, um, I think a way of taking care of them, just making sure that they know that they can always be uh, authentic and voice how they're feeling. Um, and then for myself, <laughs> uh, you know, the first couple weeks, it was a grind again. It was 12 hour days figuring this out. It was like pre-opening of the actual shop. And um, so really at night, trying to disconnect, not answer texts, not be on email is really important for me. I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily type A, type A, but I'm a Virgo if you're into that stuff. And like... <laughs> 
I'm like, really relaxing doesn't make me feel relaxed. Like sitting on the couch and putting on Netflix does not make me feel relaxed. And like, so journaling is a good thing for me. I do a gratitude journal every morning and night. I have one, it's called the five minute journal. I, I gave it to my whole team actually during this process. Um, and it's three things you're grateful for in the morning, three ways to make today great, two affirmations. And then at night, doing it a reflection of three awesome things that happened, two ways you could have made today better. And um, I do that and I start and stop and I'm okay with that. And that's what I tell people when I give it as a gift is like, it's not dated for you, you date it. So like, if you miss a couple days, pick it right back up. But for me, that's really important at the end of the day, even if it's been a shit day, I can go back and think of way more than three things that were great that happened. Yeah. And so it's a, check in like wow how amazing that even on a really bad day there are really good things that happen and seeking those out um going on long walks i've talked to my family i mean i'm close with them but i have speak to them even more now you know like finally convinced my dad to get an iphone so we could facetime so i've been having dinner with him every i mean it finally takes, finally it takes <laughs> to do it um <laughs> So that's been great. And then for me, movement is my medicine. And when I'm teaching, I'm doing it for others. So mm -hmm. carving out time for me to do it for myself, whether it's go on a run um, or, you know, pop in somebody else's class. There's yeah. a lot out there. And I've got friends who are teaching in San Francisco and I'm now able to take their class. So um, finding times for me to do that is really important for me. Beautiful. Um for, there's a lot of individuals. <laughs> <laughs> there's the two little Tulane girls that are in saying hi, and I'm on an interview. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, I, this is like this is why I love this because like I see pets going by, I see like like little people. Like I mean, I just this is like awesome. I'm so happy about this. Yeah. I, you, if you were I mean, a lot of people are at home right now, um, and they are getting paid from work, and they're like, hey, this. I've always wanted to start my own business or people that have gotten, they've gotten thought they either furloughed, fired, um, sitting at work home working and they're just really not enjoying it. They wanted to start their business. Uh, they never thought it was a time. This could possibly be the, be the time. What would you say to someone that's looking to start their own business right now? If you know what that passion is and you are, think you're ready, but it's not part, do it do it and then pivot adapt we're all doing it right now um it does not have to be perfect at all do not wait for things to be perfect if you do they're not going to happen um i think that's my greatest piece of advice i've been talking to a, a lot of different friends throughout this process who are have been thinking about doing something and unsure do it what's, Just, the, pro, what's the pro and what's the con of doing it um, I think the pro is that like, it's getting your toe wet, you know, where there's a lot of anxiety and fear around starting, but once you start, you see, it's not so scary. Um, I think a con is that like, if you haven't really thought it out and you're kind of just blindly going in, it's maybe more than pivoting once you're in there. It's just completely restructuring, which maybe could take you back a step, but I am a big proponent of do, try, fail, get better, learn, repeat, repeat, repeat. I am of the school now, uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when I started my company, coming out of my MBA program, the world had imploded. Um, entrepreneur by necessity, not by desire. And I felt like the first four or five years were like, let me get this straight. I just paid a lot of money for an MBA and it didn't teach me how to start a company. It taught me how to grow a company. And so literally probably like, six years into it, I was like, oh, now I'm feeling good about this. Um, but at the beginning, I'm like, everyone else, like, how much, do you love your business? I'm like, no, no, I don't like this. This is horrible. This is not what I wanted to do at all. And all the benefits of the trial and error has made me grow, but also has helped me with a lot of my clients. And during this time has helped because I'm like, oh yeah, like I've been here, done that. I get it. Don't lose your mind. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Um, in a perfect world, the everything changes and our new normal is tomorrow. What does your tomorrow look like? 
um, my tomorrow looks like I'm now we're doing some private in studio one on one sessions. So, um, in, and that's kind of a new normal now. We're used to having tons of people in this space and figuring out how we're going to slowly start getting people back in the building is um, what tomorrow looks like. Um, you know, figuring out how to take this streaming and make it a really viable other revenue stream for us. Um, we already have so much content and it's very easy to carry this, what we've created without a lot of extra work. Um, so figuring out marketing wise, getting creative about really growing that um, surprisingly new revenue stream. And then we're also starting a whole nother business right now, which is a smoothie bar that our sub tenant, who I was, was in this communal shared space that I'm sitting in now, um, which is pretty big, but you can't see that, um, is no longer able to write. He had to shut down during this time. And so we're taking that over. And um, so literally tomorrow, hopefully testing recipes for a bunch of smoothies. Um, but putting that building hat back on in terms of like building a new business. This is kind of up and running now. Yep. And so it's going back to when I had a million Pinterest boards and all of my break even analysis and all that crazy stuff. So we're, which is exciting right now, it feels overwhelming, but I also try and quickly change overwhelming to exciting because it is exciting. Beautiful. Um, if you had an ask personally and um, professionally, what would your ask be for anyone that is not only watching this, but is in love with New Orleans? And I have so many friends that they, they go there all the time. I mean, I'm like being, uh, being Haitian, a whole entire essence of that culture is like always been very close. I mean, I, I started my college career at University of Houston and we would go to New Orleans all the time. And so what would be the ask for anyone that has a relationship, um, a love of New Orleans? Um, I think supporting local as much as you can. Um, you know, for me in the fitness space, like I was saying, there's a lot out there, but how can you support your local people? Um, and whether that's shopping local or fitness streaming local, it might be an extra step, but we are making it available to our community and so seeking that out. Um, and then a personal ask is just during this time to try and stop with the shame, blame, and judgment. I think there's a lot of that going on and especially as we move into like this next phase of what does it look like? Um, and I'm guilty of it too. And I think just remembering everybody's doing their best right now. Yeah, you're you're a hundred percent right. One thing we didn't ask, that I didn't ask you, what classes do you teach? I mean, because <gasps> I want people to come to you. I mean, I want to do one of your classes. Yeah. So for everybody watching, we if you go to bodyshopnola.com, we have a three free three day preview that is free. So you get three days to do our live classes, um, as many of them as you want. We've got three streaming a day, or we've got this on-demand library, which is awesome. We do a HIT class, which is interval training. We do a flex and flow class, which is low impact, um, high rep yoga meets, you know, some aerobics meets. It just feels good. We start with breath work in the beginning. We have our dance cardio class called Tempo, which is so freaking fun. I mean, it is a sweaty good time. It is, you do not have to be a dancer. You could jump around just doing jumping jacks all the time, but it is fun to get your body moving and dancing and brain working with the choreography. And then we do a hit and flow class, which is a hybrid of hit and flex and flow. And then with the on-demand, we've been doing all these little specialties. So a full body stretch or a 10 minute booty burn. I'm about to hop on Instagram live and do abs and glutes. So we kind of have everything, something for everyone and they're all really fun. Love it. Oh, Kels, you are nailing it. I'm so proud of you. Oh my God, my cute little baby cakes. You are, <laughs> <laughs> you are so awesome. Um, I, once this is all, oh, well, once it's in the fall, I'm just gonna say the fall. I'm not gonna keep saying it's over because I don't even know when this is gonna be over, but in the fall, I'm gonna touch base with you guys and check to, like, for everyone I spoke to to hear 
um, how you're doing and how this has changed because I want to, I love that you took over someone that had to close. I love that you're keeping your staff together. I love that you have your community, the journal. I think I'm going to do that. I mean, I have 10 billion journals that I get as gifts. And they're it's a five minute journal and it's like, it really takes five minutes. I love it. I'm going to, that's, that's something that I really want to do. Cause I literally, when I tell you I did that cleanup work and I'm like, why do I have so many journals that are still in the package? It's crazy. Um, but I appreciate you. I love what you're doing. I love that you're taking care of the community that you found a community that you, that you're calling it your own, which is wonderful. And I cannot wait to sign up for a class. Oh, thank you. This was so fun. <laughs> I will talk to you soon. And I'm going to report back to your mom that you did a great job. Yay. All right. Mwah. Bye, darling.